Yes, I think Ireland has made an incredible progress, and I think it was very much important that about most of these rule walls also voted in the old parliament and the new parliament. And in the old parliament, uh, the party will become the governmental party. The Fine Gael was supporting already at that time certain measures, mm -hmm. so that was a certain amount of credibility. Mm -hmm. And that Kenny told his people the truth, that it will be a very hard job, which made it possible then to sell this hardship solution in that way. And therefore, it was this relatively stable way forward, mm -hmm. uh, which is, uh, I think, a good example uh, that a government has here a clear picture in front of her. Um, there was recent research from Eurostat figures which showed that, that Ireland had shouldered more than 40% of the total net cost of the bank debt, uh, or the bank debt burden across all 27 member states, um, I think between 2007 and 2011. I mean, is it fair that Ireland has shouldered so much of the bank debt? Yeah, but it, uh, it was help given also from the banking sector given. Uh, but. Uh, Everyone but it's is a huge figure for the size of the First economy. of all, yeah, but that is, was an Irish decision to do so. But also Germany has paid a lot for its banking system. Mm -hmm. uh, Germany has financed its economic programs and bailing out banks in 2009 and 10, 500 billion euros from German taxpayers. Money. The German uh, uh, debt uh, went from 60 to 80 percent alone to bail out of the Hyper Real Estate in Munich had cost nearly 100 billion euros for the German taxpayers. So everywhere we had such a thing. But Germany did it alone, and in case of Ireland and other countries, there's a European solidarity. But we, the, the feeling in Ireland among some people is that it was pushed into shouldering this huge bank debt burden yeah, but by the European authorities in order to get funding for the, the bailout, essentially. No, I think we had big banks here who had a problem because of the 2008 bank crisis. And this is, was the policy of these banks, mm -hmm. which then, because they were too big to fail, you decide to support. And for that support, you got European support. Whether it was in, uh, could have been more or not, it's another story. Uh, you might see it should be have more, but you also have to explain it to others that they have to pay. Do you know Germany has given in this crisis, these programs by the SM, ASM and others, commitments and guarantees for more than 320 billion euros to Europe. It's more than an annual budget Germany has given as guarantees to that. That is, has also to be sold to the German citizens. Do you think that's unfair? No, we believe in the European solidarity and therefore I believe it's also in our interest if we come through this crisis. But it would be wrong if we blame each other, uh, say the other does nothing and the other has to take all the burden. The middle, uh, the two in the middle as always. Do you think Germany gets unfairly criticised as the kind of the, the overlord of Europe which is overseeing all of this austerity and which is overseeing this huge shouldering of bank debt and that in fact Germany is contributing quite a lot? Germany is contributing 28% mm. of everything. What is our gene? part on the GNP of the, UP, uh, of the Eurozone. 28% of every is paid by Germany, German taxpayers. And, uh, but also the Dianetis policy is not just Germany, it's uh, the Netherlands, it's Finland, it's Austria, and of other countries. Uh, Germany is always used as an example for that, but it's wrong. Uh, Germany alone can achieve nothing. It was always supported at the end of numerous decision by the, by the Eurogroup or the European Council, and uh, therefore it's really unfair uh, just to blame Germany, despite they used to be uh, to be blamed. <laughs>